Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... Dead Men Prowl, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. In the tiny coast village of Holman, death stalked everywhere with grinning lipless gums and outstretched claws. Dr. Jamie Croft had prevailed upon Captain Friday to permit him to spend a weekend at the captain's summer cottage in Holman. They had no more than arrived on the scene when the heavy hand of death struck three times. Three deaths in the little seaside resort where death had been unknown for 20 years. Doc Sims had been found on the beach dead, apparently of natural causes. His rival for control of the village, Andrew Walters, was found hanged in his home. The village halfwit, young Rich Hartley, was found with a bullet through his heart. Even in death, these three have apparently become the most active citizens in Holman. They have been handcuffed, tied, and locked in the village morgue, but to no avail. Captain Friday has been appointed village constable by the people of Holman. Yes, I've been made constable, all right. But the three dead men still prowl the streets of the town. There's some angles to the case that just don't seem to add up. Carmel and Andres Ruiz, cousins, came here to visit their uncle, Andrew Walters. A few hours after they talked with him, he was found hanged. Gail and Martin Stanley came to Holman to investigate the death of their uncle, Doc Sims. There's a funny thing about that. They were notified of his death before he died. About the only thing I've uncovered so far is that Andy Walters was masquerading under an assumed name. He and Doc Sims are, or were brothers. The two rich men of Holman were feuding. Now they're both dead. It wouldn't be so bad if I could keep track of their bodies. I've tried everything. A few hours ago, I locked all three in the refrigeration room of the morgue. It seems to me a frozen corpse should stay put, but even that didn't hold them. Captain Friday had very definitely locked the three prowling dead in the refrigeration room of the morgue. Several hours later, Dr. Croft heard a woman screaming in the night. So, leaving the doctor and Martin Stanley with the two girls in his cottage, the captain set out with Andres to discover the trouble. Nothing was uncovered in the heavy black fog until suddenly there came a terrific explosion from the morgue. Quickly, the two men dashed to the death house to discover that the door to the refrigeration room had been burst or blown open from the inside. Furthermore, the bodies of the three prowling dead were found outside the refrigeration room in positions indicating that they had made an attempt to escape but had become suddenly inactive. Andre suddenly came upon a cord under the dead hand of Doc Sims, which ran along the floor to a far wall. He picked it up and jerked. There was a deafening explosion and the whole wall rose up and toppled in upon them. Where are you? Are you hurt? Oh, oh, Captain Friday. What's the matter, fella? Oh, we... We are not dead then, senor? <laughs> I'll say we're not. Game mighty near joining the prowling dead, though. Speaking of our dead, I guess they've done their last prowling. Buried underneath all that rock and cement. <clears throat> Look here, Andres, how are you feeling? Well, now I have got that big stone off my leg, I am all right. Nothing broken, huh? Well, if there is, I do not feel it. But, senor, how will we get out of this place? We are in the cellar, and all the morgue has tumbled down on top of us. Yeah, I know. Just the same, there's a lot of fresh air coming in down here. We'll just have to scramble around and see if we can't find a hole to crawl out of. But are we not liable to bring more rock down on top of us? I guess we'll have to take that chance. Oh, I do not like this business. We'll go slow and feel our way. If we're careful, perhaps we won't dislodge anything. Well, I will follow close behind you, senor. Uh, here. Here's what I've been looking for. Right over my head. Hole big enough to get my body through. Come on, Andres. Give me a boost. Well, is the edge is solid? Yeah, part of the foundation. Ready? All right. Let me put my foot in your hand. All right. Now then, I am ready. Okay. Yeah. Up we go. Uh. That's good. That's good. I'm all set. 
Now then, I'll reach down and give you a hand. Oh, oh, please, I will pull you back down in this hole with me. No, you won't. I can brace myself. Well, very well, if you think so. Now then, here's my hand. Well, I cannot find it in the dark. Now swing your arms around. Hmm? Oh, there, there, I find it. Okay, now. Now then. Uh, up you come. See. Ooh. Uh, uh, grab something, Andre. I'm uh, slipping. Uh, 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 I have it. I have it. Uh, 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 there. Ready to go on? Uh, see. Oh, this is most terrible. All the time I think we start new landslide down on us. All right, come on now. But be careful. Oh, I feel the fog. We must be very near out, eh? Uh, yeah. There's a broken wall alongside of us. Is there a roof over us? Oh, I can't reach the top of the wall to tell. Here, give me another boost up the side of the wall. Mm, very well. Let me step in your hand. No, no, no. no put your back against the wall. Hmm? Not like this? Uh-huh. Now then, link your hands together. And don't boost me too fast. You'll throw me over backwards. Well, I will try. Okay, let's go. Right. Up you go. Higher. No, higher. There, I got my fingers uh, on the top. Uh, it, it is high as I can lift. Now, come on. Uh, come on. Uh, I can help you a little. Uh, if I have this straight. Uh, uh, yeah, it's swell. I'm up. Well, we'll get over this and uh, we'll be out of it, I think. Oh, but how am I going to get over? Well, that's easy. I let my legs down, you grab a hold and climb right up. Oh, but I will pull you down. No, you won't. Come on. Well, if you wish. Uh, Hurry up. Oh. Hurry up, I can't hold you all day. I climb as fast as I can. Grab hold of the top. Pull yourself up. You got it? See. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, senor, I never do this before. Okay. Now to get down the other side. No. Uh. Well, if it is bad as going up, I think I will stay right here. Come on. You hang yourself over the outside of the wall like I did. I'll slide down your legs to the ground. Then I'll help you down. Well, if we only had a rope. Well, we haven't, so come on. Ready? Oh, these sharp edges of wall cut me. Well, it'll only be for a minute. Here I go. All right. Oh, oh, Captain, look out. I'm slipping. Hang on, Andres. Hang on. Oh. oh. Now, that was a swell thing to do. But, but, Captain, I could not help it. Well, we made it anyway. You hurt? I skinned my stomach, I think. Uh, do it good. Anyway, we're outside. Come on. We go somewhere else? Back to the cottage as fast as our legs will carry us. Oh, oh this is good. But, Captain Pride, who would blow up a morgue? Whoever it is that would like to get rid of us. Or see, but who is it? A funny thing. This is the first direct attempt to get rid of me. Before the attempts have only been made on you four. Well, maybe it was a mistake that you were caught in this trap. Uh, I got a hunch it wasn't a mistake at all. Now, here's the path across the lot. See. Is it not strange there is nobody around? You know, if I hear a big explosion like that, I would go see what it was. Not Holman, citizens. They're not much on going out on foggy nights for any reason. I'll wait until it gets light. Well, but the people at your cottage, my cousin Carmel and the Stanleys. Yeah, and Dr. Croft. Well, that is kind of funny. Still, the cottage is right on the ocean. Might have drowned out the sound of the explosion. Oh, I have not think of that. Hold it, Andres. Hmm? Huh? What is it? Listen. Huh. It's funny. I thought I heard a motorboat. I hear nothing, senor. And neither do I now. It must have been mistaken, and yet I... Oh, well, here we are. Got plenty of lights on in the cottage. Hmm. Maybe the doctor think it's safer with the lights on. Just shut the door after you come in, Andres. See? I... Captain! The doctor! Look, the doctor! Hey, what in thunder's been going on here? Dr. Croft, he is bound and gagged. Yeah, stand out of the way, Andres, will you? While I cut him loose. Well, his <laughs> eyes are open. He's not dead. No, no, of course not. Wait till I get this gag out. <sighs> There you are, Doctor. Now, what happened? Uh, Captain. Captain, quick. Go off to Martin Stanley and his sister. Uh, motor launch. Trying to escape. What's that? In heaven's name, hurry. I'm all right. Andres, quick. We got business outside. Senor, senor, what is it this time? Stanley's gotten hold of a launch somewhere. I knew I heard a motorboat. But where is he go? I don't ask so many questions. Run faster. But where, senor? Where? Down to the wharf, of course. Here, 
Uh, down this way. Got a revolver? No, senor. I do not shoot very good. Yeah, well, young Stanley has. You think he will shoot? Oh, but, senor, his sister would not let him shoot us. Oh, yeah. Name of pig, you do not need Here, this. Here, here's the wharf. But I do not hear any motor boats, senor. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You want to run off the end of the wharf into the ocean? Oh, oh I, I could not see where the wharf ended in this dark. Well, the launch is gone, all right. But why would they take the motor boat? Oh, how do I know? Come on, we haven't got any time to waste. But if this is war, Watch why... where you're going. Don't fall in. All the time we run, run, run. Never do we get any play. Go on back to the cottage if you'd rather. No, 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 senor. I stay by you. But my breath, it's not very good. Now we got to make speed. See that old shed down the beach on the water's edge? See? That's the swellest little police motorboat launch you ever saw in there. Careful now. But you have said there is not launch here. Yeah, I don't tell everything I know. Here now, through this little doorway... Stoop down or you'll bump your head. See? I am all right. Uh, now you stand still till I get her lights turned on. If I can help. Stand still or you'll break your neck. There. Oh, it is beautiful, Bo. Now see that chain hanging by the outer wall? See, si, senor. Go over there and haul away. It lifts the outer door. Very glad to do anything to help. I'll get the motor started. We'll be off in a jiffy. Oh, it is coming, senor. Yeah? What did you expect? <laughs> That's high enough, Andres. Come on and get in. See, si, senor. Oh, but it make big noise. All in? See. Si. Here we go, then. Oh, but this is big ocean. Where is it we will look for this other boat? Oh, that's easy. Neither Stanley nor his sister knows the Bay region. They're bound to head straight for San Francisco. They came over to Holman by boat and have a general idea of the direction of the city. Otherwise, they'll be lost, especially in this fog. But perhaps we will not be able to catch up with them. Well, this little craft can run circles around anything Stanley be able to lay his hands on. Oh, well, I do not know very much about boats. Well, you just hang on and I'll do the work. But I do not understand any of these business. Why should these two wish to escape from Holman? I can think of plenty of reasons. You... Could you please tell me one, maybe? Yeah. Bad consciences. You... You mean Miss Stanley have bad conscience? Why not? She wouldn't be the first female with one. Oh, no. No, senor, you are mistaken. Yeah, well, maybe you know. I never could get the straight of how a woman's conscience works. Sometimes it does, and most of the time it doesn't. But, senor, this girl Stanley, she's very nice, senorita, it seems to me. I... The captain, our engine is stopped. Be quiet, I cut it off. But why you do this? Shut up and listen, will you? Huh? Oh, oh, see. You wish to hear other motorboat, maybe, eh? Don't hear anything. I heard whistle a big ship. No, you didn't. That was just a foghorn. Oh, I did not know. I... Senor! Senor Captain! Now what? Senor, what had become of Carmel? She was also in your cottage. Huh? What did they do with Carmel? If they tie up Dr. Croft, what did they do with my little cousin? Oh, probably left her asleep in her room. Oh, no, no, I do not think so. Well, we can't worry about everything at once. We'll catch this pair of runaways and But then... suppose they have harmed Carmel. Suppose they have done terrible things to her. Suppose... Cutting out, Andres. What's in yours? Now cut it out, I say. Just letting your imagination run away with you. Oh, if they have so much as lay hands on Carmel, I will kill this pig, Stanley. Andres, get a hold of yourself. I do not care if Stanley is my own cousin. I will kill him. Dr. Jamie Croft, the weekend guest of Captain Friday, was found bound and gagged and tossed on a lounge in the captain's cottage. They ripped the gag from his mouth and Dr. Croft gasped out the information that Gail and Martin Stanley were trying to escape from Holman by motor launch. In their haste to recapture the Stanleys, neither Captain Friday nor Andres Ruiz thought of Carmel, alone in the cottage. Was she bound and gagged also, or has she met up with the prowling dead? While Captain Friday and Andres Ruiz search San Francisco Bay in the police launch, Andres threatens to hold Martin Stanley responsible for his cousin Carmel. I tell you, Captain Friday, I will kill this Stanley if anything has happened to Carmel. Take it easy, Andres. Wait till we find Stanley. Oh, please, could you not make this boat go faster? 
The quicker I get my hands on these Pipe pe- down, Andres. I'm going to turn off the motor again. Let's see. And I will listen with every bit of me. I do not hear anything. Shh, be quiet. Hey, did you hear it? Yeah, over in that direction. They call for help. Recognize the voices? Si, senor, it is them. You're darn tootin' it's them. Crawl up front, Andres, and hang your ears out. Can't hear much back here at the wheel. Si, senor. I will do good job, too. Yeah, it can't be more than 50 yards from us. Blast this fog. Senor, senor, a little to the right. I hear them. Right, huh? How's that? See, si. Not so fast, senor. Okay. Somebody help! There. There, do you hear them? Yeah. See anything? Not yet, senor. Oh, see, si, see, si, there they are. They are drifting in boat. Drifting where? Oh, I see them. I'm going to kill the motor and glide up alongside, Andres. Please save us. We're drifting out to sea. No, our motor's dead. We'll pay if you'll tow us in. Well, now, isn't that generous? Grab hold as we drift alongside, Andres. Si, senor. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. We thought we were lost. All right, Miss Stanley. Give me your hand. But it's Captain Friday. Say, how'd you get out here? Do as I tell you, Miss Stanley. Get into this boat. Uh, yes, sir. Easy. Oh. Easy. There now. Uh, Sit down. Okay. Now you, Stanley. I can get along without Give you. Give me your hand. All right. Hey, what are you doing? I want that gun you're carrying. I haven't got a gun. No? Well, what's this in your hip pocket, then? Nothing. Well, you won't need it anymore. Hey, what'd you throw it in the ocean for? Just so it wouldn't go off and hurt somebody. Now sit down. Well, that's what I call... Sit down. We had a right to leave home. Be quiet, Stanley. Andres, can you reach the launch's line? Si, senor, I have it. I'll carry it to the back end of our craft and give it a turn around one of those hooks. We'll tow it back to Holman. Oh, do we have to go back there? That's right, Miss Stanley. Who did you steal this boat from? Oh, please. Uh, I never did a thing like this before in all my life. Ready, Andres? Si, senor. You admit stealing the boat, huh? We don't admit anything. Oh, Martin, please. Let's not try to carry this thing out. Let's tell Captain Friday how it happened. What good would that do? You tell me, Senor Stanley, what you have done with my cousin Carmel. What's eating you, Ruiz? You tell me what you do with Carmel or I will kill you. What are you talking about, Andre? Carmel. It is Carmel who I talk about. What have you done with her? Well, we left her asleep at the cottage. You... You did not touch my cousin? Well, of course not. Why? Is she gone? I do not know. What I say to myself, if any has harmed my cousin, I will kill him like a dog. You better find out what it's all about before you start getting homicidal. Well, you are a very bad fellow to my cousin, Senor Stanley. Oh, go take a jump in the ocean. Please, Andres, Martin's upset. You just don't understand it. Well, this I do not wish to do. I can tell you plain. Come on, Miss Stanley, what's it all about? It's pretty plain that you did steal this boat. Yes. Yes, we stole it. Sissy, you crazy? Well, Martin, I think it's right to tell the truth. I- I'm going to tell. Leave it to a girl. Well, we had no intention of running away and until Dr. Croft told us there was a boat tied down at the dock. Yeah? How did he know? Well, after he'd gotten Carmel asleep, he went out to get some fresh air. When he came back, he just remarked that there was a boat tied up at the dock and... Yes, then well, what? Well, that gave us the idea of trying to get back to the city. It wasn't Gail's idea at all. It was all my doing. Oh, please, Martin. Well, it was my idea. I suggested it, and I kept after her until she agreed to go with me. But I didn't have to go. And she didn't know anything about me hitting Dr. Croft over the head and binding and gagging him, either. Martin Stanley, you didn't do that. Yes, I did. I did it while you were in the bedroom getting your things together. Oh. Yes, but what I want to know is what you think you'd have accomplished if you had escaped. The police in the city have picked you up in a minute. Oh, but we weren't trying to run away from the police. Uh, oh, no? Really, we weren't. All we wanted to do was get away from that awful place with all those dead bodies. Well, you're going back. Yes, I know. I'm sorry we attempted it now. Well, I'm not. I only wish that engine hadn't conked out. Say, where'd you get this boat, anyway? <laughs> Just a little ace in the hole, Stanley. Uh, you detectives make me sick. Yeah, uh, you'll probably be a lot sicker of them before they're through with you. They can't do anything to me. I haven't done a thing. Uh, we'll know more about that when we get back to the cottage. And that won't be very long now. There's the wharf right up ahead. Yeah, Andres. Si, senor. Here, take these handcuffs. 
But, senor... Take what? him and handcuff the two together. Oh, oh, no, please. Senor, never. I will not put handcuffs on Miss Stanley. Oh, yeah? And suppose you handcuff yourself with Stanley there. I'm not taking any chances of losing him in this fog. Oh, but please, Martin won't run away. Will you, Martin? Do what I tell you, Andres. Either handcuff Stanley with his sister or to yourself. Well, to his sister, I could not do it all. To me, if you wish, yes. That's okay with me. Here, Stanley, hold out your left arm. Sure. With my fist on the end. Oh, Martin, why did you do that? You pig of a pig! I will show you how good Spanish fellow can fight oh, now. Right, you dirty, I break your neck for you. There. And I guess I will show you I'm not so bad a fighter, eh? Well, well, for gosh sakes, at least get off my stomach. You're breaking my back. Well, then, hold out your left arm for the handcuffs. There. There. That is good. <laughs> good boy, Andres. That sounded like a swell fight. Too bad it was dark. Got him all right, Andres? Si, senor capitán. Great. Well, here we are. No, no, stop crying, Miss Stanley. Your brother had it coming. As soon as I pull up alongside, climb up that little ladder to the wharf. Oh, but it was all so unnecessary. Yeah, now, climb up. Here, you give me your hand, Miss Stanley. Now walk around after you get up. You're liable to fall in the ocean. Oh, but how are Stanley and I to climb up the ladder together? You go first, Andres. You can make it if you keep close enough together. Up you go. Oh, this is not kind of business I like. I'll just tie the launch to the dock here for the present. That'll hold her. She'll ride there till morning. You are coming, senor? Yeah, you bet. Andres, I'm going to make you deputy constable of hope. No, 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 senor. I do not wish it. What? Turn on a job with a title like that? Well, I think this is most deplorable business. It'd make everybody feel bad. All right, come along. I'll take your arm, Miss Stanley. You might stumble in the dark. If you wish. You better take Stanley's arm, too, Andres. Keep you from stepping on each other in the dark. Leave my arm alone. See? I was only trying to be helpful. Oh, if you'd only understand, Captain Friday, that Martin and I really haven't done anything. I think you've done plenty. Well, you'll be plenty sorry for putting handcuffs on me, I can tell you that much. Ten to one, you were thinking about making a break for it as soon as we landed. Well, supposing I was... I mean... Martin, you weren't. No, of course I wasn't. One good thing about Holman, it doesn't take any time to get from one place to another. There's the cottage. Oh, please, I hope we find everything all right with Carmen. Oh, sure we will. Now, look, the doctor must have worked himself free. He's turned on more lights. Oh, I hope this is good sign. Well, it won't be long now before we know all about it. We've been saying that ever since we arrived, and we don't know anything about anything. You're some detective. Just enough of a detective to pick you up in the middle of San Francisco Bay, Stanley. Come on, here we are. Andres, you and Stanley go in first. I'll follow with Miss Stanley. Hello. That you, Captain? Hmm. Got him, eh? Yep, we got him. I say, Stanley, whatever possessed you to tie me up? I wouldn't have stood in your way if I'd known you were determined to go. The heck you wouldn't. You threatened to lock me up if I made a move to leave the house. Perhaps so, but it never entered my head you'd be so savage about it. Dr. Croft, I... I'm... Terribly sorry that... that oh, oh, there, there now. I know the stress you young people have been under. Captain, where's Carmel? What? Isn't she here? Carmel? Then your doctor is not Carmel with you? With me? Why? But See here, Carmel's room is empty. Huh? I thought you had taken her with you. Oh, Carmel, she is gone. Well, something had happened to Carmel. Shut up, Andres. See here, doctor. She wasn't here when you got loose. Why? Captain, I... Quick, I want to see her room. You haven't touched anything, have you? I haven't laid my hands on a thing, Captain. Oh, Carmel. Here now. You folks stand back. Keep out of the room until I've made an examination. Play back out into the hall. Oh, Stanley, if you have done anything with my cousin, you'd better tell me. Honestly, I haven't got your cousin, Andres. Jiminy, I'm not that kind of a guy. Well, somebody has. All right. My doctor, come here. What is it? What have you found? Uh, look at these tracks. Somebody tramped across the wet sand... Climbed into the window and came in here beside the sleeping girl's bed. Oh, no! Do you recognize those tracks, Doctor? For heaven's sake, Captain, no. Do you? Yes. Those are the same tracks made by Andrew Walters the night he buried Miss Stanley in the sand. Oh, no! No! My Carmel buried in the sand! Oh, no! No!
once more the prowling dead have made an appearance at Captain Friday's cottage. The last time these sinister figures appeared, Gail Stanley was buried alive in the sand. Is that the fate of Carmel? Listen next week at this same time for the tenth and final episode of Dead Men Prowl, titled The Prowling Dead Introduces Himself. The murderer is at last revealed by Captain Friday. You are listening to Adventures by Morse. <laughs> 